Fournette. Fournette goes airborne. He's in. Touchdown, Jaguars. Tip and intercepted by Ramsey to close it out. It's over. The Jacksonville Jaguars have pulled off the upset of the playoffs. What is going on, everybody? It is Tree from Tree Talk here to recap the week number eight matchup between the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Philadelphia Eagles. And boy, oh boy, uh, it's the fourth week in a row. We took an L, and this one was about just as frustrating as the rest of them. So let's go ahead and recap this bitch. So, ladies and gentlemen, I am Tree from BigJReport.com. This is the Jacksonville Jaguars versus Philadelphia Eagles week number eight recap. And before we go into breaking down the offense and these special teams here in this take, I want to talk about... Things that I noticed throughout the game, things that went uh, not our way. We don't really have a lot of good things to be talking about early on in this video. So the third downs continues to be a problem. It seemed like every time Carson Wentz dropped back to pass on third down, it was going to be completed no matter what. Now, I understand that our secondary was banged up. It really is. We're down to three undrafted free agents. But <clears throat> that being said, you guys still got to kind of make an effort like to get off the field on third downs I mean you get them to that situation you need to keep them in that situation and make them punt the ball I don't even think Philadelphia punted the ball more than twice like on third downs they were efficient as efficient can be and especially when this game was a one score game and you guys just let them go out there drive the ball score a touchdown like that's just stuff that we don't need the third downs are the biggest problem for this defense right now uh, it was a lot different from last year, but it's a lot of the same from past Jaguar teams. Uh, it's frustrating. It's frustrating on third downs when your team just cannot get off the field to save its life. And that's how that's how the Jaguars are playing football right now. They cannot get off the field on third down to save their lives. Now, I think I speak for a lot of Jags fans here when I say Nathaniel Hackett should be gone this week. Hopefully early on in the week so we can prep for the week nine I mean, the Week 10 matchup, because we had the Week 9 bye, which I think, personally, the Week 9 bye couldn't have came at a better time. This team's struggling. I think we definitely need to take a step back. And again, the schedule gets a little bit easier uh, after the bye as well. So I think that the Week 9 bye is the perfect time to have it. And <clears throat> I think a couple of coaching changes should be made. I don't think Todd Wash will get fired, which is kind of the opposite of what I kind of thought was going to happen uh, prior to to about maybe three, four weeks ago when Bortles got benched uh, last week. <clears throat> it seemed like Todd Wash was the guy. Todd Wash was the issue. But when you make Blake Bortles throw the ball 31 times and you go out and you trade for a running back in Carlos Hyde and you run the ball with him six times, what was the point of trading for Carlos Hyde? We're going to have Leonard Fournette back in week 10. If you want to be a power running team, why don't you be a power running team? I don't think we were ever down more than 11 points in this game. There were tons of time for us to run the ball, yet we didn't do that. We only had 12 rushing attempts as a team, which is god-awful for a power-running team. And you also had Blake Bortles, the guy that you guys benched last week, and a guy that a lot of people are skeptical about, throw the ball 31 times. Granted, he did not turn the ball over in this game, which is good. That's not something you want from Blake Bortles. Blake Bortles isn't that type of quarterback to drop back and throw 31 times. Fucking, I keep telling you, I mean, 41 times, excuse me. I told you guys, like, he needs to be on a fucking pitch count. Because, you know, the other week he threw, what, 61 times, 51 times? You know, we don't need Blake to be throwing the ball that much. We're never in that big of a hole. Like, we are always in a situation where we could come back in some capacity. But you still think we need to pass the ball on every single down. Like, we don't have elite wide receivers running out there. And we don't have, you know, really much of... Anything for Blake to throw the ball to, you know, guys are banged up, guys are hurt. Let's give it to Yeldon, let's give it to Hyde. Like, <clears throat> it seems like simple math here. That's why I think that Daniel Hackett is probably going to be uh, fired by this time this uh, by sometime this week. Uh, whether that be tomorrow, today, I don't know. Probably not today. It's a little bit too late in the day for that to happen. But um, I think he will be. Fired. And finally, before we dive into the offense and the special teams, the secondary is so banged up. Uh, big props to Quentin Meeks, though. I'll get into that when I talk about the secondary a little bit. But Quentin Meeks, he went out there. He had a pretty good game for himself uh, for a guy that has not seen a lot of playing time. But he, unfortunately, got injured. Then we're down to Trey Hurden and this guy that used to bag groceries at Winco or something, you know. like, And we're going up against an elite quarterback. You know, we couldn't do anything about that. Secondary is supposed to be... 
where the Jaguars thrive at. You know, you got Ramsey and you got all these guys. And, you know, it was easy for Wentz because, you know, Alshon still had a couple of catches over Jalen. But the only thing Wentz had to do was not throw Jalen's way. He either had to throw at one of these uh, corners that aren't perennial starters or throw it at Telvin Smith because Telvin Smith can't cover a fucking anything to save his entire fucking existence. So, you know, it's just... It sucks. Like, that's that's a big reason the season's going how it is, is injuries. And it sucks. And it's not fun. But <clears throat> sometimes you get bit with the injury bug, and this year it was just our turn. And hopefully, you know, we can turn it around and try and start to work with what we got. Because right now, we're not even trying to compete to make the playoffs or win the division. Right now, we're trying to compete to not be last in the division. The Colts just won last uh, yesterday. So they are also 3-5. and five, And we are also 3-5. and five. Houston's 5-3. and three. And, you know, we need, to, we need to make something happen. We need to make something happen quick if we're going to make the playoffs. Which, right now, I think they, they showed a graphic. If you start off 3-5, and five, you have an 8% chance of making the playoffs. And I don't like those odds, man. I don't think... I don't think... Because, like, right now, we only have two games to give, maybe. Maybe only one. Probably only one game to give. Uh, you can't really make the playoffs if you have more than six losses. And... Right now in week number nine, entering week number nine, we have we have five. So, you know, we can't probably can't make the playoffs, but nonetheless, you know, it's a letdown of a season. But let's get into the offense and the special teams. Special teams first and foremost, everybody give a round of applause to the boy Josh Lambeau. Mr. Automatic kicked his career long, 57 yards. <clears throat> and as well as the longest kick in uh, Wembley history as well as breaking the Jaguar record for the most consecutive made field goals. We've came leaps and bounds from Jason Myers, and we are rolling with Josh Lambeau, and he is doing one hell of a job for us. Couldn't be more happier for the guy. He's living his dream. He's doing his thing out there. Congratulations to Josh Lambeau, and thanks for what you are doing with this team. You might just be the best player we have on our roster right now. So let's talk about the offense. The offensive line gave up four sacks. And Blake had, like, no time. You know, pressure was in his face. Even if he wasn't getting sacked necessarily, there was people uh, in his grill. I think this is one of the better offensive lineman performance that we've had in this stretch. So I'm going to give him a C-. minus. But Blake still got sacked four times. And, you know, just, like, they couldn't pick up any blitzes. Like, that was just a bad thing. They just could not pick up any blitzes. And like I said, Blake had absolutely no time to throw the ball. And it really, really showed. Um, with some of the decisions that he made. So, final, we're giving the offensive line a C-. They did okay. They didn't do great, but like I said, I think this is better than some of the previous weeks. Not to say that they are doing great, but again, better than previous weeks that we have lost. The running backs were completely and non-existent. Like I said, 12 attempts. I'm not even going to grade the running backs because I think it's just so ridiculous and so fucking ludicrous uh, you go out and you pick up Carlos Hyde. You have TJ Yeldon that's put together a pretty good year. And right now he's become more of a receiver than a uh, running back. He led the Jags in receiving yards again this week. And it just doesn't make any sense to me. You know, you go out, you trade for a power back in Carlos Hyde. He's a proven guy that can get the job done. Uh, if you just hand him the ball off and you did it. You gave him the ball six times, I believe. And that was it. It was like when he, when we gave him the ball in that third and one and he didn't get it. Like, that was the deciding factor if Carlos Hyde was going to get more playing time. And unfortunately for him, he didn't get it. So he didn't get uh, all that playing time. And you made Blake in the second half throw the ball 31 times in a row, which is just fucking ridiculous. That's why I can't even grade these running backs because I don't even have a lot to go off of as far as running attempts go. So I think that <clears throat> this is another Nathaniel Hackett thing. I think Nathaniel Hackett isn't letting Blake, I mean, isn't letting the offense run the ball. And, you know, Doug Marone really wants to be a power running offense. He keeps saying that in his press conferences. That has to mean something. It has to mean there's a little tension between him and Nathaniel Hackett that he wants to call more run plays, but Hackett isn't doing so. So, you know, there has to be something there. Nathaniel Hackett has got to go. Uh, I was a big Nathaniel Hackett guy early on in the season, but as of right now, he is not he is not doing much. Now, as far as the wide receivers go, Dante Moncrief can't compete to save his life. Uh, he did lead the, le lead the league, lead the Jags in receiving yards today with 54 yards. But whenever there's just a contested ball, that boy does not compete for it. He doesn't go up to get it. 
he only gets the balls that are either directly in the bread basket or thrown right to him, right in the chest, right in the numbers. He doesn't compete for anything. He doesn't compete for any ball. He doesn't compete for anything. You know, and it's just embarrassing. He doesn't go out there. There was this one throw that Blake threw that was right in his grasp. Just a couple of, just one extra step he would have got there. Didn't do it. Um, yeah. Like I said, Dante, Dante Moncrief led the receivers, but uh, TJ Yeldon led the day for receiving yards for, for 86 yards. And uh, like I said, not a lot of people give TJ Yeldon a lot of credit. I think he's had probably the most successful season out of anybody on this Jaguar offense. Okay, DJ Chark did good too. He had four catches for 41 yards, but two things. One, why are you so fucking awkward, bud? Like, <laughs> he caught this one pass, probably would have went to the house. Tripped up on his own feet. Dude, that's what I did in flag football when I was about to score my first touchdown. You're in the NFL, bud. Like, you can't, you can't be doing that. You can't be tripping on your own feet while you're running to get a touchdown, you silly fucking goose can't do that and two i wish you weren't so fucking awkward bud because i want you and i want you to be good but oh my god i have never seen a more embarrassing drop than the third and goal to i think it was either to give us the lead or for us to tie the game or for us to uh be within one score you had it in your hands you tipped it and then you threw it like out of your hands and threw it to the center. what in the fuck was that that was the most embarrassing drop, embarrassing thing I've ever seen in my entire fucking existence, DJ Chark. And I want you to be good really bad, and you've had a decent season, you know, getting to... And also, I wish you weren't so fucking awkward, bud. You got fucking lit up, too. <laughs> he just... DJ Chark, man, he is just... He's, he's a confusing cat, but I like him. I really do. So, you know, I really wish he would do better, and I really wish he caught that touchdown pass. Uh, D.D. Westbrook as well, he caught a touchdown pass, that was a beautiful, beautiful catch, continuously looking like the Jaguars' number one wide receiver, and uh, Keelan Cole needs to get benched for D.J. Chark, like, the receivers that should be on the field at all times is D.D. Westbrook, uh, Dante Moncrief, D.J. Chark, and Keelan Cole should just come in whenever we feel fit, and Blake should just not throw him the ball, because he is playing like garbage. He had another drop, and he had the fumble. The fumble was the momentum swing, and it was fucking ugly. Keelan Cole does not deserve to play. He should be benched, and he, yeah, didn't do good. So for these wide receivers, we are going to be giving them a C-. Uh, you know, some of the guys stepped up and did good, DJ Shark being one of them, D.D. Westbrook also. There's a couple of guys that I think could either try harder, like Dante Moncrief, or guys that just sucked it up, like Keelan Cole. So, you know. It's a dime a dozen, man. You need to you need to find some happy mediums. So I think a C minus is all right for these uh, wide receivers. As far as Blake Bortles goes, he did fine. He did all right. I mean, he took it and he run he ran with it. He did what he needed to do. That last gas play on fourth and however many, um, he probably should have ran it or he probably should have waited a little bit longer to make the read. Um, but other than that, I mean. We couldn't score a touchdown, which I understand that criticism. I really do. But as far as going out there, being a quarterback, doing your job, I think he did fine. I don't think he did exceptionally well. I don't think he did exceptionally bad either. I think he just did fine, and I think that's fair. So that being said, we're going to give Blake Bortles a C on the day. Not too good, not too bad. Could be better. Now it is time for the offense's final grade, and I'm going to have to say... A C minus. <clears throat> like I said, I think this is the one of the better offensive performances we've had for a couple of weeks. Uh, the only exception being we cannot put a fucking touchdown drive together. You know, we kicked a lot of field goals. And trust me, I understand that criticism. But I think that there has to be a little bit of optimism here. Because, you know, we went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Eagles, Super Bowl champs, and they're a good team. They are a really good team. And, you know, we came so close to fucking winning that game. Just a couple of mistakes, a couple of injuries, you know, and we have it. I think that this game is going to build a little bit of momentum. I think with what we have done there on the offensive side of the ball, it's going to build a little bit of momentum. Because after the bye, we have the Colts. Then we have Pittsburgh on Sunday night, which we always do well against Pittsburgh, but that's going to be a little bit questionable. Then we got the Bills, Colts, Titans, Redskins, Dolphins, Texans. And those are all pretty winnable games, you know, and hopefully the division comes down to week 17 and we can beat Houston. We also really need to beat Tennessee 
on um, Thursday night in Week 14. And then you know you got that Buffalo team. I think we could beat. I think we could beat the Colts twice. Uh, Washington's going to be a little bit difficult. And then we got Miami. So you know we there's there's winnable games on that schedule. And I think that this game, from how close it was, I think if it makes sense, is going to build a little bit of momentum for the offense in order for us to win games down the stretch after the. <clears throat> now let us talk about the defense. The defensive line did bad. I did bad. Yeah, let's do that. They didn't do good. They did bad. Yan, I think Yan got the sack. Miles Jack as well. He's a linebacker, though, obviously. He got a sack. Uh, Carson Wentz make Leia Scamble look like a fucking goon. <laughs> just ducked the boy. Didn't even give him a chance. And fucking Clay Scamble, six foot eight, too. And just Carson just ducked him. It was. I've never seen anything like that. And, uh, yeah, so defensive line. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, never. I have somebody I want to give a special shout out to, and who I think, spoiler, might win Defensive Player of the Week. Avery Jones went out there and had a low key, pretty good game. Like, he was stuffing runs. Uh, if that fumble would have st- stood, he caused the fumble and recovered it, I believe. And, you know, he, he had a big day for us on the defensive line, and I really want to give him a special shout out. I think that he had a terrific game um, for us. I really do. I think, shout outs to Avery Jones if you're watching this. Shout out to Avery Jones. He had a great game. Uh, so the defensive line as a whole, we're going to give them a C. I think that's respectable. Um, they didn't really get after it too much. This offensive line was injured too, and they still struggled to do to get it, to get after it. So again, don't call us Saxonville until a further notice. <clears throat> as far as the linebackers go, Miles Jack had a good day, and I think one of the better days of anybody on this defense had eight tackles, one sack. He went out there, he did his job, he did his part. He's been one of the most consistent players on the uh, defensive side of the ball, aside from Jalen Ramsey. And Ramsey's even kind of struggled a little bit, but Miles Jack, he's been very consistent. Uh, When there's a one-on-one tackle, he'll make it. When, uh, you know, you ask him to play in the zone, he'll get the pick. You know, if you ask him to blitz, he'll blitz. And, you know, the one one sack that he got, dude, he was just, whew, came in there full speed like a rocket. I've never seen someone come in for a sack so fast. So Miles Jack, he had a good day. As for Telvin Smith, though, Telvin Smith continues, continues to struggle. I don't understand what happened from your first years here. You were dominant. You were one of the best players that we had for years. But now you are just bad. It's like, man, you've been hanging out with Puzz too much. Like, I understand Puzz is your boy. And, you know, he's taught you everything you needed to know. But your goddamn zone coverage looks like Paul Puzz loves in your zone coverage. You let just people run right by you, right in the back. And, you know, you let them you let them catch footballs. And, you know, we can't let that happen. And, unfortunately, we are letting that happen. So, not a good day for Telvin Smith. For the linebackers as a whole, though, we'll give them a C+. Like I said, Miles Jack had a good day. Uh, I don't want Telvin Smith's bad day to completely ruin how good of a day uh, Miles Jack necessarily had. So, with that being said, I think that is fair. And last but not least, the secondary. Ouchie. Ouchie. Like, that, that's like that's all I can say. And, like, you guys will completely understand. They are banged up. When I say banged up, I mean they are really, really banged up. Like... Just like there was a guy that came in that the the guys, you know, uh, Mariucci, Kurt Warner, you know, all those guys, they did not even have him on the depth chart. Like, that's how, like, deep we had to dig for cornerback help. And Jalen Ramsey, too, he kind of, he let a couple of catches for Alshon Jeffrey slide. And the secondary was kind of a big reason why we lost this game. There's injuries, and I understand that there was injuries and these guys aren't experienced players. But nonetheless, that's still... A reason that we lost uh, like I said shout out to Quentin Meeks I think when he had his opportunity to go out there and play he did really well uh, almost had two interceptions off of Carson Wentz actually uh, Trey Hurden when he went in there he did not do good <laughs> he struggled and you know like I said you know we were going up against an elite quarterback and you know if we go up, if we have that many injuries who's gonna pick on those corners and with that being said secondary just gets an F uh, is that fair D, D minus, D minus is fair, because Jalen Ramsey got his first interception of the season as well, failed to mention that, but uh, he did that, and that was a good play, I was really excited for that, and really excited to see that for Jalen, but uh, as a secondary as a whole, man, they are banged up, but D minus is definitely fair, uh, when they were going out there, and they really couldn't do much uh, at all, 
And now it's time for the defense's final grade, and I'm going to be giving them a D+. Uh, there were some bright sides, Yannick Ngakwe, Avery Jones, Miles Jack, I'm looking at you guys. But there was a lot of low lights and a lot of low sides. You know, I'm looking at you, uh, Trey Hernan, uh, Telvin Smith, you know, all those guys that got hurt. Uh, it's real funny. Ronnie Harrison got hurt also in that game, and that's just, that's another just, what are we going to do with that? And, you know, just injuries have been killing this whole season. Like I said, I think the Week 9 bye came at a perfect time. And hopefully these guys can, you know, get healthy and be back in full force. And we can try try and make a run. Now it is time for my favorite time of the week, your favorite time of the week, and everybody's favorite time of the week. It is Players of the Week. And I understand this is like the fourth week in a row that we've lost. And, you know, we're handing out Players of the Week. We're getting a little frustrated. But uh, let us let us be optimistic and happy for a guy named Josh Lambeau, who's going to be Special Teams Player of the Week. He's made 9 or 10 consecutive field goals, which is impressive as all hell. He notched a career long, notched a Wembley long of 57 yards, and had a terrific game, and he's so far had a terrific season. So I think that that's something we should stay up about, something we should be happy about. Congratulations to the most handsome man on the Jaguars team, Josh Lambeau. You're out there, you're killing it, you're doing your thing. Congratulations, you're killing it. Now, as for the offensive MVP, this one was a little hard. It's really hard. And, uh, you know, there's. I want to give it to TJ Yeldon. I think that makes the most sense. So that's why I'm going to do it. <laughs> I'm going to, yeah, let's do that. TJ Yeldon, who is leading the table for Offensive Player of the Year right now. I believe this is either his fourth or fifth. Uh, we're going to go back. We're going to look at the tape. We're going to see... And we'll make a leaderboard by the bye week because uh, I'll have a lot of time on my hand because I won't be making videos because of the bye week. So hopefully we'll have that made. But yeah, I think this is TJ Yeldon's fourth or fifth, and he has a pretty big lead. Like I said, he's becoming more of a receiver. He didn't really run the ball very much, but he led the team in receiving yards. He was reliable. He only dropped one catch. The only guy that I was considering giving it to also is either DJ Chark or Blake Bortles. But if I gave it to Bortles, the internet would just burn me alive. And DJ Chark had that costly drop. But other than that, he had a good game. And I was so close to giving it to him as well. But like I said, I think TJ Yeldon makes the most sense. He led the league. I mean, led the team in the yards in that game. And had a good day. So TJ Yeldon, fourth or fifth offensive player of the week. Congratulations. You're almost looking like you're built to be the offensive player uh, of the year. Especially this late in the season now, heading into week nine. Four or five, that's more, that's like, that's, a, that's more than half, is it? Five would be more than half, four wouldn't, but four would be half. I don't know. I'm not very good at math. Anyway, for the defensive player of the week, I was going to give it to Avery Jones because that's my dog. He went out there and he had a great day. But I'm going to give it to Miles Jack. I think Miles Jack had a good day. He had eight tackles, one sack, Um, which is good. You know, this is his second defensive player of the week for me. And I think he continues to be one of the consistent centerpieces of this defense, something that a lot of these players aren't. And that was my Jaguars vs. Eagles week number 8 recap. What do you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget to check the links down below as well. Don't forget to like me on Facebook at True Talks. Follow me on Twitter at Trevon Pixley and follow me on Instagram at Trayvon Pixley. Also, if you're feeling oh so generous, please don't forget you can go over and donate on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash True Talks to get exclusive tree talks content also don't forget to hit that subscribe button click the bell icon so you get notified every single time i drop a new video i drop new jaguar content on this channel six days a week ain't nobody out working me them just straight facts thank you guys so much for watching this video and as always you guys have a great day